The beauty of a mechanical watch comes down to the movement ticking within, and for the most part it's completely hidden from view. Even with a sapphire case back, it's a shame to hide the mastery of this centuries-old technology from plain sight, and that's a thought shared by watchmaker to King Louis XV, André Charles, who cut open his dials to expose the innards. Here are five open-dialed watches that continue the tradition. Alongside Longines, Oris offers some of the best value for money on the market. Founded the year before Rolex in 1904, and named after a nearby brook, Oris was a bit of a giant in its day, with factories in Holstein, Holderbank, Como, Corgendey, Herbertswil and Zyphen, and the company even built a village for its staff to live in. It's surprising that Oris isn't more of a big deal today, especially since, after the death of co-founder Georges Christian, a certain individual by the name of Jacques David Lecoult became president of the board of directors. You may know Jacques David as the grandson of Antoine Lecoult and the man who joined forces with Edmund Jaeger to co-found Jaeger Lecoult. In any case, the brand can be found at the more affordable end of Swiss watchmaking today, presenting a Salita SW200, a staple of the brands in this arena and the replacement for the soon-to-be-unavailable Eta 2824, within its sapphire crystal sandwich, only here with a bit of a difference. As you can see, this Oris translucent skeleton does exactly what it says on the tin, relieving the watch of any superfluous material that might hinder the view of the inner workings. At this level, the skeletonization is performed fairly simplistically and by machine, but it is still ruthlessly performed, allowing a candid view of the beating, ticking, winding parts that give the hands drive. There's real thought in the design, too, with the movements suspended in the centre of the case through cleverly placed supports that double not only as the hour markers, but also as the stem tube for the crown. Traditional skeletonization is one of the most skilled undertakings in watchmaking. One slip, one tiny, tiny slip, and the bridge, cock or plate is toast. It's a laborious process that takes many weeks of sawing, filing, polishing, engraving to reveal the fragile flowing form hidden within the metal. The downside of it all is that it costs a lot of money, as you'd expect, but Maurice Lacroix has found something of a compromise with its masterpiece squelet tradition. Have a machine do it. Sure, this isn't the picturesque ideal of the white moustached watchmaker working at his bench, plying a trade learned over many decades, but it offers much of the result for a significantly reduced price. Styling preferences aside, Granted, this traditional look isn't everybody's cup of tea, this is a surprisingly close estimation of what you'd get from the real handworked thing, with the tells only revealing themselves up close. It's the limitations of the machinery that are most apparent, be it in the lack of variation in depth, width and angle of the engraving, the rounded inside edges in place of crisp angular corners, and the precision of the shaping and polishing of the beveling. The movement itself, a hand-wound ETA 6497, is ripe for skeletonization. The big balance, here with screwed weights for that traditional look, arcing gear train and chunky mainspring barrel and click, a suitably pleasant arrangement to receive such candid presentation. Master watchmaker Armin Strom, known for his exquisite hand skeletonization work, started his own brand on the back of the ETA workhorses, only his versions cost £20,000. Trust Corum to do things not just differently, but completely differently. When you have a great curving 52mm tool case in PVD titanium like you have with this tie bridge here, the last thing any watchmaker would think of doing is filling it with the tiniest movement imaginable. Seemingly taking inspiration from the skimpy bracelet watches popular in women's fashion during the 1920s and 30s, Corum's Calibre C0007 lays out the working of a mechanical watch in a long, thin line. From mainspring, to centre wheel, to third wheel, to fourth wheel, to escape wheel, and finally, to the balance wheel. The design finds its origins back in 1980, at the hands of Corum master watchmaker Vincent Calabrese. He was challenged, in the face of the demise of mechanical watchmaking, to make a timepiece that put the movement first, celebrated it. 
The result was the Golden Bridge, and it did just that, the long skinny movement floating in a sapphire capsule. It wasn't the smallest movement ever made. That accolade goes to Jaeger LeCoultre's calibre 101 at 14mm long, 4.8mm wide and 3.4mm thick, but it's pretty dinky, and the most up-to-date version packs, thanks to the tiny balance wheel and big mainspring, a three-day power reserve between its titanium bridges. If there was one major flaw in the design of the original Golden Bridge, it's certainly been addressed by the tie bridge. Peer between the industrial structure holding the movement in place, and you'll see just a strip of sapphire in the back through which to admire the movement. Better than seeing a great swathe of pink, hairy arm. Yes, there are many Hublot watches that are big and brash and loud, but there's also this, the classic fusion Aerofusion Moonface Titanium. Men's shaving appliance naming convention aside, this is a Hublot that offers a bit of a change of pace from what's come to be expected, available in a titanium case as small as 42mm in diameter and 12mm thick, about the same as a Speedmaster. The movement might be recognisable as similar to one seen earlier in the Oris, and that's because it is, based on the Salita SW300 for the basics, with a custom module built on top for the additional complications. The base plate even has SW300 still engraved on it. But it's the module we're more interested in here, because it adds a sizeable boon to the off-the-shelf Salita, namely triple calendar and moon phase complications. Stripped of a dial, the bit that Hublot, and inevitably the owner, will pay for is on full show, and the efforts made to minimise adding additional thickness to the SW300's 3.6mm form are readily apparent. There's barely enough space to slide a piece of paper between the operational gizzards of what Hublot calls the calibre Hub 1131, which are further exposed thanks to the delicately stenciled day and month displays. The centrepiece of the dial is surely the moon phase display, which piggybacks off of the date subdial and has a pair of engraved depictions of the moon cycling across a deep blue iridescent background, a pop of colour on an otherwise monochrome watch. If you're familiar with skeletonized and open dialed watches, which by this point you should be, you'll notice something odd about Arnold and Son's TB88. Not sure? Give up? Here's the thing, the TB88 is backwards. All the other watches here, and pretty much every other movement ever made, follows the same basic structure. The powertrain goes at the back. Now, this is for one very simple and sensible reason. If a watchmaker needs to access the moving parts for inspection or regulation, they can do so by simply taking the case back off. You don't need to take the movement out, the dial off, etc, etc. But if Arnold and Son's other watches are anything to go by, the brand isn't in the business of making things the normal way. So the TB88's calibre A&S5003 has ended up flip-flopped around to present what would normally be hidden in the back, out at the front. This isn't just a random impulsive need to do things the wrong way, there's method to the madness. Arnold and Son, whilst not directly linked to the great British watchmaker of the same name, has spent every scrap of time it has making watches that honour the man. Here, TB refers to Truebeat, a single pallet mechanism that drives the second hand one tick per second, a feature used on marine chronometers John Arnold built to assist navigation at sea. 88 is a nod to the earliest known John Arnold pocket watch, a number that can be seen on the dial in the form of the twin mainspring barrels, balance wheel and second subdial. And every bridge and cock, and there are many, one for every pivot, is straight cut, just the way John Arnold used to like them. Whether your budget is a few thousand pounds or £40,000, if you're looking for an open dialed watch, there's plenty to choose from. It's a proud tradition, and a revealing one, that offers a better insight into what defines mechanical watchmaking from its electronic counterpart. Considering this old collection of wheels and springs managed to see off the advancement of technology to become one of the most desirable industries in the world, it's surely worthy of having the spotlight shone on it every once in a while.
Discover more exceptional watches at watchfinder.co.uk. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If there are any other watches you'd like to see reviewed, please let us know in the comments below.